I'ma crush it. Come Welcome to Unsung, Pittsburgh's nonprofit news magazine show. I'm your host, Anthony Walker. In this episode, we're down in the Strip District where many Pittsburghers come to hang out, eat some good food, and shop for some of the best the city has to offer. Unsung gets a little pain on our hands in this episode as we visit Art Expression to see how art is spreading and we find out how the Pittsburgh Symphony is inspiring veterans with music. But first, as always, let's take a look at what's happening with our area nonprofits. Waterkeeper Alliance joined with other groups including Clean Water Action and the Sierra Club in a report closing the floodgates how the coal industry is poisoning our water and how we can stop it. The report details the toxic discharges from coal burning power plants and the resulting harm to our rivers and streams. The report comes as the EPA is asking for comment on its first discharge rule under the Clean Water Act after 30 years of waiting. Of the various options included in the proposal, some of which were added by the Office of Management and Budget after intervention from coal industry lobbyists, the zero discharge option is the most protective of health and the environment. This option has power plants installing existing technology and converting to safer coal ash handling systems that will eliminate discharges of the most contaminated wastewaters entirely. A copy of the report is available at the address on your screen. In a little more than two years that have passed since the 48-year-old Neil Alexander of suburban Pittsburgh was diagnosed with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, more commonly known as ALS or Lou Gehrig's. His hands have weakened, his lung capacity has declined, and he is beginning to have difficulty with his speech. Over the past few months, his legs have gotten significantly weaker so that now he walks with a limp, has trouble using stairs, and has fallen several times. He knows the fatal disease is progressing through his body, but for more than a year he believes the progression has slowed. The reason he thinks is Dex. From October 2011 through January 2013, Alexander was one of nearly 1,000 ALS patients enrolled in a late-stage clinical trial of Dexpram Aprex Ol, commonly called Dex by patients, a compound investigated in earlier trials by Knopp Biosciences in Pittsburgh. The company was created to explore new treatments for ALS. Biogen IDEC, the Weston, Massachusetts-based company that ran the latest trial announced in January it was the continuing development of the drug. Biogen IDEC, the Weston, Mass-based company that ran the latest trial announced in January it was discontinuing development of the drug, stating the trial showed DEX to be ineffective in treating ALS. Here in Pittsburgh, however, Knopp wants to continue exploring the drug. The company believes its analysis of the Biogen results shows some ALS patients may indeed benefit from DEX. The dispute underscores the conflicts that arise in the search for treatments for devastating diseases like ALS or Parkinson's, particularly when the evidence from the clinical trials seem to clash with the actual experiences of some patients. In the case of DEX, the conflict has escalated into a legal battle between the two companies that once worked together to explore treatments. You can follow this story and others on Neil Alexander by visiting the Post-Gazette series, The Luckiest Man Living with Lou Gehrig's Disease. With art and school funding being cut drastically, each year with Chachi Plays, we like to help subsidize that. This year, Art Expressions was the benefactor for Chachi Plays, so let's go visit them and build some bridges. Art Expression is a after-school program uh, where we help children with their social skills through art. Our goals are an increase in self-esteem and confidence. We also help children to, uh, with their social skills by participation in a group. Um, we help children with their problem-solving strategies. We help children with their frustration tolerance through problem solving. We help children to put themselves forward in an appropriate manner within a group. Um, we also provide um, skills to children to cope with bullying. I think everyone needs creative problem solving in their lives and art is such a wonderful way to express what's going on and it's, it's a way to see in depth of who you are and what's going on and um, getting to shed light on some mysteries, I think, and to do it in a group atmosphere means that you're sharing the experience with other people. So then we have specialty programs that are aligned with um, STEAM, STEAM uh, ideas, which is science, technology, engineering, and art, 
art, and math combined. Uh, we have several. We have EchoSmart, which is uh, combined science and art, um, and it helps children to, uh, they learn how to recycle in our classes, start growing. Um, that combines science and art and nutrition, and we uh, teach children about um, uh, not only taking care of themselves, but uh, not only nurturing themselves, but uh, nurturing the environment. Our third specialty program is called Architecture, Building Bridges, and it incorporates science, engineering, art, and math. And uh, children learn about the components of bridge building as, as well as learning about the metaphors that are associated with bridge building. That is, um, uh, uh, you know, building relationships, uh, with each other, um, the metaphors of don't burn your bridges, art expression from the heart, uh, where we work with uh, children from the homeless shelters and their families, and we also work with Operation Military Kids, uh, which is the military children and their families. Um, we customize special workshops for them are doing a, a special uh, program at the Toonsium for Pittsburgh children um, through the funding that was uh, arranged by Chachi Playing for Kids, uh, which is an, a video game uh, marathon. And um, we're very happy to be doing that. We have, that is in conjunction with uh, Joe Woos from the Toonsium, where we are doing uh, cartoon workshops where Joe would be teaching the techniques of cartooning and Art Expression is doing storyboarding where the children will be able to uh, compose their own cartoon uh, uh, storyline and uh, become their own cartoon heroes and answering some of their own problem solving. Uh, I see is, is kids starting to relate better to each other in class. I, I see them wanting to share their art, which is exciting. I hear back from parents that I don't know you, what you do with them, but they actually talk about art expression. They, you know, they come home from school and it, it's usually, what did you do today? Nothing. Or, you know, well, we had math, you know, and with our program we see over and over that kids start saying oh mom i made this project and this is what it says about me this year we we're really thrilled to receive um, an honor from the national arts and humanities youth program award which is given by the president's committee on the arts and the humanities uh, the uh, national endowment for the arts uh, and the National Institute of uh, Museum and Library Services. This finalist status establishes us as one of the top arts and humanities youth programs in the United States. I think we're kind of pioneering a little bit, at least that's what nationally is being said about art expression, but I feel that it's really getting back into the roots of our founders. It was people who worked in all different fields, so as fine artists coming in to work with people. So I think it's that we're kind of pioneering in some ways in a modern way, but again, we're going back to its roots. Uh, my husband and I fund a, a great part of this foundation. Um, we have received funding from um, the Pittsburgh Day of Giving through the Pittsburgh Foundation. Uh, we also have received funding through Chachi Plays for Kids, and we did get a grant from the Grable Foundation uh, where we were able to facilitate the program in a rural area out in Waynesburg. People can help us by logging into our website at www.artexpressioninc.org. And we do have a donate page. Um, we do have, we are always looking for volunteers. Um, we could uh, certainly use uh, administrative help, we could use help with marketing, we could use help with uh, strategic planning, um, we could use uh, help with uh, accounting, with uh, um, anything to do with the law. Um, the PSO works with the VA Hospital's Music and Wellness Program. Here's a story on how a flute inspired a vet. When we went back to the Veterans Hospital for the second time, um, we were very proactive in advance to ask what the specific goals were. Um, it's not just a case of going and presenting music or presenting a nice concert. The, the goals are um, quite specific actually and so in working with Ginger the music therapist uh, we 
we had wonderful um, guidance from her. So she said the main focus is to help these elderly patients um, to, to really stimulate them and to stimulate their cognitive uh, functioning, um, to encourage them to interact with each other, to encourage eye contact, um, to help lift their spirits. So for example, one of the melodies that we played, I introduced it, um, it's a famous, well it's not that famous, but in the, in the piping tradition, it's a pretty famous tune, and it's called Sunset, and it was written by a soldier who fought in the First World War in the Battle of the Somme. He was in one of the Highland regiments from Scotland, and so it fitted in with our Celtic theme, and also uh, playing for veterans, it's very nice to present them a piece that was written by a soldier, and that was actually written in the trenches. Um, so it's a very, very haunting melody, and uh, I, can, I can play you a little bit now. So it's, it's a melody that has a beautiful, quiet dignity to it. I told the soldiers, um, the, the, the participants there, about the tradition in piping of um, playing in the outdoors and you know, you could imagine the piper a long way away walking towards you with his bagpipes and then going into the distance again. So, so I gave them that image to, to it, it have in their minds as I, as I played it. And that, that piece has, as I said, is a quiet dignity. So that's one of the kind of pieces that really can provide either, you know, reflection, um, meditation, but it can also provide a strength because it, it's got a certain kind of a wonderful space to it and a, a step and, and the melody itself has got a certain strength in it. So it's like a real resource. And um, it was wonderful um, to hear some of the stories that that uh, helped bring back for people and the, for example there was a, a man there who had been stationed over in Britain and he could remember um, hearing one of the Scottish regiments uh, pass by where he was stationed. He was on guard duty and he can remember saluting to the pipe band as they as they marched past and uh, he he enjoyed telling that story. Um, he, and and I, maybe that was triggered by the image of the pipers coming from the distance and walking by or, or perhaps it was the melody that had stirred start that uh, memory. So that, that was one of the stories. Um, and Ginger, the music therapist, was wonderful at this stage in, the, in our presentation. She asked the, the patients there, you know, in times of your greatest difficulty or um, in times that were very dark, you know, when you were in combat, what was a resource for you in the same way that this beautiful melody sunset had been a resource for the Scottish soldier in the First World War. And it was really moving to hear what uh, some of the patients said. I remember there was one man who had been in Vietnam and he, he said he carri he'd carried a, a photograph of his family and that he always looked at that uh, when he was really struggling. Um, so it's it's wonderful that uh, you know Ginger helped to stimulate some of these personal stories. The Millville Community Library will celebrate their grand opening on August 18th with tons of performances and activities throughout the day. We've really enjoyed watching their space come together and we can't wait to celebrate their contribution to the community. Ribbon cutting is at 1.30 
you can check out the full schedule of the day's events at the address on your screen. The City of Play Festival is a showcase of the best new games in the world coming back to Pittsburgh on August 31st. Hand selected as the very best in urban games, the games featured at the City of Play Festival give participants new ways to experience and understand their city. Learn more about obscure games in the City of Play at cityofplay.org festival. Three Rivers Waterkeeper returns to the water with Venture Outdoors to explore Lower Allegheny between Gertie's Run, Pine Creek, and Lawrenceville. You can paddle five miles stopping along the way to highlight water quality issues and discuss what can be done about them. This is sure to be an eye-opening adventure. After the paddle, you can head over to the Dry Lag Brewery in Millville for a tasting and tour. Details available at threeriverswaterkeeper.org. As always, you might have recognized story tags and Twitter handles after our story. We invite you to continue the conversation by tagging the nonprofit or using the story tag on Twitter. You can also get in touch with us on Twitter at PGH on video or hashtag UnsungPGH. You can check out our previous episodes and our Unsung Uncut series on PittsburghOnVideo.org, as well as video and audio versions on iTunes and YouTube. You got a nonprofit you think is cool? Let us know why, and you might find yourself here on Unsung. You can email your ideas to Christopher at WhitlatchC at pghfdn.org. As always, thank you for watching Unsung. Be sure to share it with your friends. As always, I've been your host, Anthony Walker, reminding you to keep it awesome, Pittsburgh. We'll see you next time. So I said I'ma crush it Call me the golden boy cause it shine whenever I touch it Don't rush it, the flow comes naturally Actually, the whole hood after me 